Tashi, hello, bonjour everyone, and welcome. In this video, we will learn about the methods used in wetland invertebrate surveys. Wetland invertebrates are small organisms like dragonflies, mayflies, snails, and worms that live in wetlands and other water bodies. They are an important food source for fish, amphibians, and turtles. The different types of wetland invertebrates and their abundance can also tell us about water quality and wetland health. When you first arrive at your site, identify and record the wetland habitat. If you need help, refer to your wetland monitoring pocket guide. Use the online data sheet to record details about the wetland, including the name and site number, the location, the survey date, weather conditions, and whether the bottom of the wetland is muddy, rocky, or woody. Next, use the bug net to sweep the grass and vegetation that is not in the water to capture adult insects that are beside the wetland. Look for adult dragonflies and damselflies. Once you see or capture insects, record the information in the online data sheet. Use Appendix D at the back of your wetland health monitoring pocket guide to help you identify the insects you find. This next step is very important. Take a look at the bottom sediments and water depths to decide whether it is safe to step into the water. If it is safe to do so, put on your rubber boots or waders, grab your aquatic D-net and sample tray, step into the water and wade out to one meter or three feet away from the shore to begin collecting wetland invertebrates, while your other team member stays on shore for safety. If it isn't safe for you to enter the water, stand as close to the water's edge as you are comfortable and try not to reach too far so that you can keep your balance. Using the D-net, sweep through the water in an arc to collect a sample. If you are able, move the net up and down as well as side to side to maximize the area you are sampling. Make sure you are sweeping through some of the vegetation in the wetland. Don't worry if you also get some of the muddy bottom in your sample. Invertebrates live there too. Once you have finished your sweep, empty the contents of the net into your sample tray. If you have too much material for the tray, that's okay. Just leave some of it in your net and sort your sample in stages. The next step is to sort and identify the wetland invertebrates in your sample. The simplest way to separate the invertebrates from any debris and sediments is to pick them out by hand. Start by removing larger materials such as vegetation, pieces of wood, or rocks from the tray. As you remove these materials, carefully inspect them for clinging invertebrates, placing any invertebrates you find back into the tray for collection. Using forceps, pick all invertebrates out of the tray and transfer them to a separate container such as a Petri dish or a small Tupperware. Do not examine any large invertebrates in your hand. Next, you will need to sort all of the invertebrates collected into similar types and record how many you've collected from each category, including invertebrates with shells, invertebrates with cases, invertebrates with more than 10 legs, beetles, invertebrates with six legs, hard bodies, and or wings, and obvious eyes, invertebrates with six legs and soft bodies, invertebrates that look like worms, invertebrates that look like worms but have heads or mouths. A hand lens or magnifying glass, along with the images in your pocketbook, might be helpful for the next step. First, take the invertebrates with cases and count how many have cases that are tube-shaped or square-shaped, cases made of leaf litter, small sticks, sand, or other materials, and record the total. These are caddisfly larvae. Next, take the invertebrates with six legs, hard bodies and or wings, and obvious eyes. Count and record how many have two tail filaments and no abdominal gills. These are stonefly larvae. Count and record how many have two or three filaments but do not have abdominal gills. These are mayfly larvae. Count and record how many have three flat tail filaments, no abdominal gills, and a large hinge mouth. These are damselfly larvae. Lastly, count and record how many have no tail filaments, have wing pads, and have a large hinged mouth. These are dragonfly larvae. Before leaving the site, upload any photos you have taken and ensure all the sections of the online datasheet are completed and submitted. Marcy, 